Hi folks, this is all the fruit. It's the end of May and today we're going to be foraging in and around the German city of Heidelberg. We had a very cold spring or actually you could say it's a normal German spring like before the climate change. In the last couple of years we got used to a more sub-Mediterranean climate with temperatures of like 30 degrees centigrade in the middle of April. Now we are the end of May and the temperature right now on especially cold day is 15 degrees centigrade, okay? It's nice and sunny, but the fruits are very late. Normally in May in Germany, nowadays, you would already have a lot of cherries, strawberries and also mulberries and cherry plums. Now, well, if you are lucky, we might already find something. Let's see what we got here. It's a cherry plum tree, an ancestor of our modern hybrid plums. Well, the Germans don't know the secret, but cherry plums are tasty when still green. Other plums are disgusting. When unripe, but cherry plums are good. Mm. Lots of brambles. The fruit of the bramble is the blackberry. Blackberry season is in summer. However, in spring, you can actually eat the young shoots after you peel them. You can peel them with your teeth. Yeah, okay. The spring was quite moist and rainy, as you can see from the vegetation. But the stuff is already getting a bit tough and tart and slightly bitter. But still edible if you peel them. Also you can use the leaves to make a tea. Basically you can eat a lot of the leaves and the stems of the blackberry or bramble. If you don't mind the toughness and the slight bitterness. Mountain maple. Atzar pseudoplatanus. Well, in early spring you can make maple syrup from this one. And actually a lot of parts are supposed to be edible, but they are incredibly bitter even compared to other edible plants. Here I saw some strawberries. Unfortunately, that's the Indian strawberry. They are disgusting and invasive. Disgusting because they are invasive and also because they are not tasty. Since the fruit season this year is very late. We're gonna make more of a wild vegetables video. You can totally eat the stinging nettles if you if you are careful with the stingers. The stingers are very painful or oh, lots of insects on this one. Later you can make fibers from the stems and even later if you manage to catch the tasty little nuts of the nettle Mm, no, much too early. If you manage to catch them at the right time, they are really tasty and rich in fat and nutrients. The stinging nettle is a very, is a very nutrient rich plant, very common throughout Europe. Very important to know as a forager and also very important if you walk through it in shorts, uh, you will never forget it again. Another important plant, the burdock. Not only can you use it as as a sun hat in summer. You can also use it to make a makeshift wrapping for fruits or veggies you forage somewhere along the way for berries and stuff. Just be careful the other plant species with big leaves which are irritating to the skin. The burdock is safe. And actually, I've never tried this, but you're supposed to be able to eat the stalks of the leaves and especially the big, the big uh, starchy roots. So a very interesting plant to know for foraging. And of course you can throw the uh, sticky fruits with all their hooks at your friends. Uh, if you don't want to keep them as friends, that is. This area is known as the Anschusheimer Feld, the main fruit and veg growing area of Heidelberg. However, there are also a couple small grain fields. There are a lot of professional fruit and veg growers here, but also a lot of like small allotments where people spend their weekends. Guess this guy has a fish pot somewhere. You can forage some nice sturgeons. An old pear tree to the left. A meadow. The grass probably used 
to feed some horses or other animals. A couple cherries and plums in the meadow. Here, a hazelnut bush. None of them in season. All cherries. Cherries have been the backbone of the fruit industry around here. Oh, hi goats. This used to be a tree nursery. They didn't want to cut down the trees, now the goats have finished them off. Yeah, cherries used to be the backbone of uh, the commercial fruit growing around here. While in colder areas in the mountains it was more like cider apples and cider pears. Here we have something interesting. A ruse or a sumac. The Germans call it vinegar tree. And this is, oh, <coughs> well, it's highly invasive. Firstly, almost impossible to kill. However, if you know how, you can make, you can eat the fruits. Oh. Okay, got the whole inflorescence. Those fruits are very hairy. They look like teeny tiny rambutans, basically. Red and hairy. And there are hundreds of them in the inflorescence. They ripened last autumn, but still look nice and fresh. Hmm. Hmm. Heavy and spiny. Hmm. The texture is not pleasant at all. But the taste is a nice sour taste. It's already a bit weak. Because months of <coughs> rain has leashed it away. But it's still totally, totally there. So basically, what has often been done is the fruit, mostly, traditionally it's a different species, Rus coriaria, this is Rus tifaina, from North America, if I'm not mistaken. Traditionally, sumac has been ground up to a powder and used as a spice, I guess, to reduce the, mm, the feeling of the hairs. But you can basically also put it in water, take it out of the water and hope that the water is nice and sour. Plum tree some plum suckers coming out of the ground. A young cherry tree. Ah, this is a this is a willow. Salix Salix is this I think Salix Caprea, good for bees. A walnut tree. None of them is in season. In a what we are well what we get used to call normal years in a normal year. Uh, at least cherries and strawberries and also some other berries would be ripe. Now I just saw ripe strawberries in a greenhouse. Lots of ornamental stuff. Those came here in the last uh, 60, 70 years until the 50s or even 60s. Those areas where those plots here were used exclusively to produce food. But since people got rich, uh, yeah, there are also a lot of plots just used for fun. Old chestnuts. Chestnuts in Germany are very rarely older than this one. Yeah, there are two very conflicting theories about it. Either the German Wehrmacht cut down all the chestnut trees for gun butts in World War II, or the harsh winters during and after World War II killed most of the old trees. But basically this tree here, yeah, should be about 70 years old and older trees than that are very rare in Germany. Here the laurel cherry, the Germans think the fruits are poisonous but you can eat them when they are completely ripe which will be in late summer. Oh, neighbors dropped trash on this plot I'm managing, have to have, to have it removed. Lots and lots of trash. Mm, nice and smelly roses. Of course, rose hips are edible, and until recently you could still find the dried rose hips from last winter. At this time of year, you can totally eat the flowers, or make a lot of things with the flowers. Here we have something nice and tasty. Abies. Was abies fir or spruce? Well, actually, wait. Yeah, this is abies. However, this thing in the background could be Picea abies. Well, a lot of those have nice and edible and tasty young mm, shoots. 
this is a Christmas tree plantation. Nice, edible, tasty, very healthy, very vitamin C rich. You can make syrups and stuff from them. However, be careful. In other families, they are also toxic conifers. This stuff tastes good. Sour and tangy. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. But they also edible species which taste horrible. This one, however, is good. The black locust, one of the most invasive trees in Europe. It's from North America. Very good wood. That's why it was planted. All parts of it are toxic. That might be one reason the wood is so durable. Also, the wood is extremely hard. It was planted in Germany after they lost their colonies to replace the tropical acacia for um, car wheels and stuff like that. Well, all parts are toxic, except for the flowers. And the flowers are plentiful and very tasty. Mm. Good stuff. Sweet. Those are, well, those are not extremely sweet. Mm. Also savory, also fresh. Those are flowers you can eat in huge amounts. A black tom. Mm. One of the big less piney varieties, so I guess this is rather some sort of hybrid with the blue plum. Well, plums are black thorn cherry plum hybrids. And this is either a feral blue plum, mm, but I would rather say it's a back cross between a blue plum and the black thorn. Here, the vicious big thorns. Those ornamental cherry plums with pink flowers and purple leaves and fruits. They look very different from the, let's say, normal wildish ones, but they are just as edible. Here we have, what do we have? Dogwood. Not edible, however, the, the little fruits, they taste like tiny little very bitter avocados. You can make some sort of very bitter guacamole out of them. I guess it's too bitter for eating, but I guess it should be good enough for your skin. Here a quince tree with very small quinces. Quinces ripe, ripen very late in the season, like in October, November, so right now they are still very small. Saskatoon will be ripe in a couple weeks, one of the tastiest fruits here, but the Germans don't know it's edible. And in the background, one, one row of grapevines. Basically, in historic times, People would have their vineyards on the uh, on the slope of the mountains to protect them from from the frost, which is accumulating here in the lowlands. But now with climate change, they also have them in the lowlands. But historically, everybody had like room for. Don't eat me, please. Don't forage me. Everybody here had uh, places for vegetables and grain and sugar beets here in the lowlands, then beneath the hills, at the lowest foothills, there were some fruits, and then in the middle foothills, with the mildest climate, but very steep terrain, there were fruits and, um, and wine, and even un up to the hilltops there were fruits and wine, but now this area is considered too rough for them. Here, an elderberry, however, right now it doesn't have elderberries, but elder flowers. You can make tea out of them, you can make syrup and liquor out of them, and you can also make quite tasty pancakes out of them, or wait till the fruits are ripe. And right next to it, a hawthorn. You can eat the young, uh, the young leaves and flowers in spring, now it's too late for that, now you have to wait a couple months till the edible fruits, which look like tiny apples, come out. Well, since we have a walnut here along the trail, and I'm making longer pieces, longer clips, because it's better to make them while pushing my bike than while being on the bike. Well, walnut, very specific smell, good against insects. Cannot see, ah, here are the small fruits. Around that age, well, my grandfather told me when I was a kid that it's healthy to swallow a couple of those whole every spring. 
for some medicinal reasons. It's quite unpleasant, as you can imagine, swallowing even a small, small walnut without chewing. I haven't done it since then, also because I don't know what exactly health benefits those tiny nuts should have. Small veggie plot with zucchinis and peas and onions and lettuces and stuff. I don't want to get closer. Guess those folks want their privacy. A couple of thistles here. In front is the... What is it called? Well, this thistle has been used for uh, roughing up woolen fabric. Actually, here in the West, they replaced it with metal after World War II, but my grandma still worked in a workshop where they did it with those things. Also, I think the seeds are good because they are oily and nutritious. Behind it, the whitish stuff this should be what? Donkey thistle. Well, the stuff in, in, in front is um, Dipsahus and the stuff in the back is Onopordon, if you want the Latin names. Um, very beautiful because of the wild, white plant. They get much bigger. Those are still young because it's quite cold. They can get up to three meters tall and they get very, yeah, they get very beautiful pink flowers and you can actually eat the flower pots like artichokes. Behind them a couple other thistles. A little bit far away. Actually, you can peel some, you can peel most thistles just like, uh, just like uh, rose uh, no, just like uh, uh, brambles and eat them and eat the inside. Here's some mellow, which is very good as a vegetable. And also the original marshmallows were made from a, from a mellow. Here we have Lactuca seriola, the compass plant. They call it compass plant because the leaves are not horizontal, they are vertical and they are said they are turned in all four directions of the compass. That's not true, they turn with the sun. And this is actually the wild, uh, it's the wild ancestor of lettuce. Lactuca zeriola is also the scientific name of most of our lettuces. Here we have, here we have the, na, Unotera bienis. What was the, what was the English name? Uh, forgot the English name, it comes from North America, but now a lot of species have um, been naturalized here in Germany. Don't eat me. Don't eat me. I taste bad. I've eaten so many toxic plants. I'm not edible. Well, this thing, the roots are edible and also the seeds. However, I, I didn't try the roots. Other people did and told me they are tasty. I think he was trained to chase away nosy people. Well, the seeds taste like wood, but the roots seem to be good. So, let's go away. Well, here we have Plantago. What is it? Plantago lanceolata, also a very nice wild vegetable. It's supposed to taste like mushrooms. Here we have a little area which was planted by the city, like in order to make the area more, more biodiverse and more interesting for birds and stuff. The cherries, very, very few cherries this year. But some of them are already pinkish enough to eat. Here also a planted hedge. Well, the, I'm sure the cherry plum was not planted, but the Viburnum opulus was planted. Also the wild rose was planted, just like the rowan. They're all edible in their own way. Well, uh, Viburnum opulus not too edible. Wild rose, yeah, you can eat the flowers and the young shoots and the fruits later. Rowan, you can eat the fruits after heating them. Hawthorn was probably also planted and also the liguster. Not sure if the uh, liguster is private in English. Not sure if the uh, if the field maple over there was planted. It's possible that it came on its own. Well, we are here. The tasty clover. Clover. I think there should be what Trifolium pratense. Mm. Very sweet flowers. Yeah, not very sweet, but sweet enough. Those are actually almost not sweet. But still totally good for eating. 
and which which dock is this this is supposed to be the dock right not exactly sure it's one if it's one of the edible species could be rumex crispus then it would be one of the edible species it could be rumex obtusifolius well no the leaves are not obtuse they are more or less pointy but anyways the tasty edible base leaves are gone already so this stuff is already too too rough uh, too tough and too unpalatable to eat I was told that this was the the first heated greenhouse here like eight or so years ago not sure if it's true but yeah we are coming into an area with more and more uh, farms which are uh, yeah with more and more farms and uh, yeah little fruit and veg farms basically they are producing very small amounts of produce and selling it in the fancy shops of Heidelberg so this stuff you will not find in Aldi or some of the other cheap big chains but this you will find in small local shops however people say that the production is not even uh, for the small local shops and foreign trucks with fruit and veg are often being seen driving into this area and then stuff is being repackaged and sold as locally produced fruit and veg at least those are the rumors i haven't seen it myself let's see what we got here greenhouse strawberries already being harvested the germans usually don't care at all about the here tomatoes it will take some time even in the greenhouse germans don't care at all about the variety of a strawberry but the germany produced strawberries are gonna be always more expensive here beans this area is also quite good for broad beans as you can see the outdoor strawberries are not ripe yet which is really crazy which is really crazy around this time of the year here a different tomato variety you can see the leaves look completely different you will be surprised but this little plant here is a chamomile one of the few chamomiles with medicinal properties the flowers look small and inconspicuous but it has the same smell and the same medicinal properties as the as the um, yeah as the nice white chamomile which is used as a medicine and here I'm seeing a nice mutation a fasciation the flower head is being pulled out it's much longer or wider or what you would say than the normal ones Hordeum murino what would this be mouse barley in German I think it's barley hordeum you can check it it's called mouse barley because it's smaller than the normal barley so it's of use on little small animals like mice it's a very important climate indicator even before the climate change really hit in northern germany this was a plant of city climate in southern germany a plant of village climate and here in the warmest part in the upper rhine valley it would grow outside of the villages but in other parts of Germany you could not see it in the fields it, it would grow in the warm in the in the warm heat islands of cities towns and villages only other edible clover down here white clover here they are planting cucumbers everything still very small uh, eggplants here some more stable greenhouses also with eggplants tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff old pear tree most of those old trees are not even being harvested anymore there is still a small distillery here uh, two two little roads away from here but i guess they don't need so many fruits uh, more cucumbers here a sour cherry tree those are sour but they are also sweet and they are also very versatile in making sweet and sour dishes yeah even the greenhouse business is not going so well because some have been given up already but most of them are still going strong strawberries lots of strawberries plums eggplants <laughs> also here there are lots of people who like to snatch some tasty fruit and veg so people so the farmers are usually very cautious when somebody's driving around and looking at the fields. 
plant, if they cannot sell a cauliflower, they just cut it in half so that it rots quickly and people don't start foraging for it. Mm, lots and lots of strawberry greenhouses, yeah. Selling them a couple weeks earlier can make a big difference in the price. The old tomato stems are being thrown away. In older times they were burnt. You don't compost them and use them as fertilizer because they carry too many diseases. Here a big almond tree. Actually you can eat the young almonds at this stage. Maybe we'll find some going towards the town now. We saw mostly what we can forage and what we shouldn't forage in the fields because those are farmers, they work for their produce, so don't forage their stuff. But now we're gonna see what we can find in a city, nicely fertilized by the countless dogs of the Germans. Let's see what we have here. Hanschusheim, well in the center is still kind of a so remain kind of an old village. The fields are also, they also still have a living agriculture here in between the new areas. Those are mostly people who are not too closely associated with the village. But, yeah, rich people living here for a couple of decades, they kind of become part of it, but still there. It takes a long time here to be considered. A long time and a lot of effort to be considered part of the village. A fig tree. Nowadays, it's very rare that they get frost damage. When I was younger, like 20, 30 years ago, those would get frost damage over almost every winter. And so you would rarely get fruits. Now they are a pretty common fruit tree. Here an almond, which is most probably a peach almond, because almost all almonds here are ornamental peach almonds. Fruits are still edible, just a lot harder to crack. Here we have a Portuguese laurel cherry, much more bitter than the normal laurel cherry, which comes from the Balkans and Anatolia. The Portuguese one is almost not edible. A lot of diseases on the fruit trees, climate change, and with climate change come a lot of parasites, so a lot of people here are looking for new fruit trees and I wanted to help introducing new exotic fruit trees because the old ones are dying or you have to, to spray the traditional species with too many pesticides. But for now this project has been cancelled. Sorbus aria. It has yeah, mealy, dry, starchy berries, which yeah, you can eat them, but you can also use them to make flour and bread and cakes and stuff. Good sized pomegranate over three meters tall. Those also had basically no chance here in Germany before the climate change. Even apricot trees like this one over there were not doing too well. And now with the climate change where we are definitely not Mediterranean yet, but verging on sub Mediterranean here, a relative of the gummy berry to the right. Well, have to be careful to get run over. And another fig tree, yeah, especially in young neighborhoods, people are usually planting more figs than cherries nowadays. Okay, here is an opportunity to do a little bit of foraging without stealing stuff. This is a public park with a lot of edible things. Of course, you shouldn't harvest it like it's a private garden, but like trying one or two berries to know which variety you want to buy or collecting a few spices is okay. Spinous blackberries. Not in season. Topinambur, a nice tuber from North America. Very edible and nourishing, but will make you fart like crazy, and the taste is not as good as potatoes. Borago officinalis, I don't even know the English name. Very spiny, hairy leaves, but a lot of people like the taste. I don't like it because of the spidiness and hairiness. Oregon over there, good for pizza, however this is not the Italian, this is more the temperate variety. Oregon grape, estragon, Artemisia dracunculus, lots of dog poo. Different currants, in cold climates currants are, very, are a very important fruit. Even if you cannot grow grapevines you make wine from currants. When my father lived in the Balkan mountains he was so used to making wine because he had lived in the, uh, at the banks of the Danube for a couple years. 
and since he didn't believe that he could make good enough a uh, good enough vineyard with grapes he made the vineyard with different currants and it was quite successful here we have grapes right next to currants this is a wine growing area here you can grow grapes but germans also like their currants so they have a lot of currants an apple tree a lot of ornamentals they used to be more especially more spices in the first years more herbs and spices here a khaki plum a lot of germans still don't know it can be grown here fennel and this is um, altea officinalis i would say what's the what's the english name isn't this the original marshmallow altea could be the original marshmallow it was a different species this looks like some fancy oregano yeah it is much stronger taste a much stronger smell this is from the mediterranean and this what was this supposed to be a polygonum somebody told me this in one of my last videos it's kind of a vegetable also some feralish onions here oh yeah feijoa or pineapple guava last year we had a good guava harvest here in heidelberg peach almonds but this plant has very few fruits a lot of nice flowers for the insects let's see it starts repeating itself here a nice white mulberry with fruits which will be black when they are ripe that's normal most white mulberry varieties have actually black fruits gooseberries close relative of the current here again the horrible invasive Indian strawberry <coughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun when they had so many spices here they have some mint back there I know they have some interesting blackberry and raspberry varieties this peach almond didn't make it and here we are almost at the end of the little garden here a little mediterranean style garden with yucca what was this curry plant or muggy plant well very strong spice you can smell it even here european dwarf palm however it's not looking too good it survived but it got damaged and the filurea and i think there was a, an olive somewhere around here but the climate here is still not warm enough for olives unfortunately another little city park this one not so rich in edible stuff there is the tree foliate orange with kind of edible fruits almonds a couple palms those should be the himalaya palms they were there was a big bunch of bananas over there non-edible bananas well the himalaya palms are not much more edible but they replaced the bananas with palms and with this allium nigrum you can totally eat those giant clusters of onion flowers over there and you could also eat the giant clusters of roses everywhere i realized that for foraging i should be moving around with a little basket and collect the stuff and probably make a salad lavender out of it but i'm too lazy so i'll just show you what's theoretically forageable around here and i'm even too lazy to get down from my bike most of the time so you'll either have to like it or to hate it here among the ivy this was used as a replacement for sugar maples in east asia but most of this stuff is ivy anyways elderberries huh. ornamental cherries those don't produce any type of edible fruits Saharinum, one of the actual sugar maples from north america not the main one but the second most important one and the birches over there you can also use them to get birch water which is okay let me bike which is very much lower in sugar content than maple syrup so you usually don't use it to make sugar you mostly use it to gain the water let's do a bit of foraging along the river bank water such is always a very important place for foraging 
Not only does everything grow bigger and lusher and fresher and juicier here, you also get, well, you get all the water plants and animals, you got all the land plants and animals, they all meet at the edge of the water, but you also have stuff that typically just grows at the edge of the water, like riverbank plants and swamp plants and animals and stuff. Here we have pick and lush stinging nettles. No, no, something jumped away here. Probably something forageable. Look at the size of those burdock leaves. In case of a rainy event, you could use the biggest ones as umbrellas. But beneath the leaves, in the ground, there are huge roots which are totally edible and which are being cultivated in places like Japan. Well, another plant from Japan is the giant, what was it? It's Rhinutria japonica. The, it's a sort of giant relative of sorrels and rhubarbs. Tasting just like them. However, those are a little bit old. Also, they contain a lot of <coughs> oxalic acid. When they are still young, uh, like the tip of this one, they are tasty. And when they are old, you can use them as pipes. You can use them to collect water. You can use them, well, after you, after you poke them with a stick, you can use them as a water pipe. Actually, when I was a little kid, I used to make aqueducts and uh, water wheels and stuff with the help of this stuff and pieces of wood. It's also a very nice mechanical plant. Well, the willows here, you can use the twigs instead of toothbrush. And since salicylic acid, uh, salicylic acid, yeah, the stuff that uh, is the uh, effective component in aspirin, comes from salix, which is this tree, the willow. It basically provides you with an antiseptic covering for this toothbrush. Also, you can make baskets and other stuff. And if you want soft, soft uh, wood, soft, easy to work wood, very lightweight, the willow is your best bet. Also, it makes a lot of nectar. Here are the topinambur invasive plant from North America. It has big edible tubers, which were actually more common in Europe before the potatoes became widespread. Let's see. Well, here the stingless nettle, also totally edible. Uh, daisies. Mint. I think this is what the Germans call horse mint. Yeah. So this thing, I think the roots or some other terrible properties, but not sure. Well, of course, the elderberry, or right now, the elder flowers. Still missing a couple of very important uh, riverbank plants here. Well, I think those iris are a kind of toxic. Here, one single leaf of horseradish. I mean, it's a hot. And probably very, probably very uh, um, germophobic, no, not germophobic, antiseptic spice. If you have a spice as hot as horseradish, you can gulp down a lot of things which you wouldn't otherwise. Also rushes, very good for weaving. Here we have the white stingless nettle and the red one. Tells uh, I'm looking for a few really important survival plants which I currently cannot find. Maybe they are not in flower yet. Well, here again some sorrel or some dock. It's it's not sorrel, it's sour, but not as sour as dock. This is, this could be Rumex crispus, a tasty species, but too old now. Well, this here is Rumex obtusifolius, a bitter and toxic species. Ah, yeah, Isocrates. Yeah, Socrates very, very, was a very rich guy, so he was able to bribe the legal system of Athens to allow him to drink 
one cup of this stuff, which spared him from a very painful death, which is poorer, uh, which is poorer citizens had to endure. Well, if you didn't get it, this stuff is highly toxic. If you want to die fast, well, oh, nice, a hornet. Very careful with those. They are not as dangerous as people say, but this thing is still very painful. Reeds, also very important. You can do a lot of stuff with the long stalks. And I think the rhizome has some edible properties too, but I'm not too good at it. I wanted to look at, to look for cattails, which are much more edible than reeds, but right now I cannot find them. Well, you never can find the stuff when you are looking for it. Ah, yeah, we've had beavers here in the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you are more on the carnivorous side at the water's edge and nearby, you can also hunt big, juicy, fat beavers. Yeah, I wonder how they left so many trees alone. We are supposed to have very few beavers yet, but still, most of the trees are doing well. Guess because our winters are so mild that they eat other stuff, but bark. Hops, good for beer if you have all the other ingredients, but in spring you can also look for the young, for the young stems. <coughs> this is a little bit too old, but if you dig the young bleach to our ones out of the underbrush, it is still edible. They can be very tasty. Well, yeah, couldn't find a couple of the important plants, but still not bad for a reverse edge.